when we talk about sustainability, seaweed is a key item because you don't need soil, you don't need fresh water. Uh, it grows really by itself if you string it on a line and you cultivate it. It's a very easy, self-sustained food that you can grow in so many areas in the world. Seaweed is basically an algae or sea vegetables. It can grow in the ocean, it can grow in rivers, and it can grow in lakes. It's a sea plant, basically. It's a red algae like uh, this, which is dulse, or uh, brown algae, this would be sweet kelp. Hunt harvesting is, I think, the best way to do it. When you cut the seaweed, you can carefully cut so you don't make the stem too short and you know the seaweed will grow back. In my opinion, that's the way you should go. You should uh, hunt harvest seaweed as much as uh, possible. Our seafood plate is a European place. Uh, it's whole on the bone with skin on. Uh, I'm gonna slice gently into the skin and season it with, um, with dulse and fry it in the pan with butter so the skin gets nice and crispy. I like pickled vegetables, so I'm gonna pickle red onion and some celery. I'm gonna make my own pickling liquid uh, and I'll show you that in a bit. But uh, when that liquid cools down, I'm gonna press that onto my uh, dulse and have some crispy dulse, a part of the garnish. And then we have sweet kelp, which is a very nice uh, Icelandic kelp as well. And uh, what I've done here is that I've fried it, uh, basically deep fried it, and uh, just put some sesame seed on it for uh, some extra flavor. So that's gonna be a part of the garnish, and then we have some potatoes and uh, broccoli. So I'm just gonna get into it and show you how I make uh, the pickled uh, vegetable. I slice red onion just into wedges like this. I like the shape and the texture that it comes. I slice thinly because the pickling liquid, I poured it over hot and I let it cool down. I slice the celery thinly so it kind of cooks in the liquid. For my pickling liquid, um, I like to use star anise, uh, mustard seed, fennel, uh, cardamoms, and uh, different types of pepper. Put it in the pot like this. I heat it up because the oil inside the spices gets out all the pregnancy and, uh, and the flavors. So I always let it heat up before I pour in the, the vinegar. Now when the uh, vinegar is in, I pour in the sugar. So it's about 50-50 uh, sugar and uh, vinegar that makes it sweet and sour and has this beautiful spiciness from all the spices that are inside the, uh, the liquid. Next, I'm gonna just put the celery and the onion. I'm gonna loose it up, you know, the veggies, so it's all loose like this. Just put it in here. And then I strain the liquid over. And when that cools down, it kind of semi-cooks the onion and the celery. And that same liquid I will use later to uh, brush a little bit on the dulse to give it an extra flavor. But my experience with uh, if you pickle dulse, you need to have a cold liquid. If you put it in a hot liquid, it kind of uh, gets moussey and, uh, and doesn't really taste that great. Now the pickling liquid is uh, ready, so I just strain it over the, the onion and the celery. So and just uh, let it cool down while we uh, prepare the fish. I like to season this with, uh, with my sweet kelp uh, sea salt, which is a blend that I just uh, give a, a touch of flavor. That once again gives a little bit of this uh, umami flavor back into it, like an undertone that just like lays right there. Here we go. Nice and roasted. And a little bit more uh, sweet kelp salt. I pre-cooked the potatoes. I just press them down and then I fry them in butter. Now the garnish is ready. Uh, 
I just put it on the side and uh, I'm gonna get started on the fish. To get the flavor of the dulse inside the flesh of the fish, I'm gonna make some slices into the skin. That's important to uh, get the flavors uh, deep inside the meat. Just continue to make them on both sides and I do it on the other side. Just season it a little with, uh, with the dulse flakes, which is uh, just regular dulse that has been dried and then actually ground it down. So it makes these like nice little flakes. When we get into the pan and they melt in with the butter, they will bring out the flavor and, and that flavor will also get inside the flask. Now it's uh, ready for the pan. I'm gonna cook it slow in the pan, but I'm gonna cook it with a lot of butter. I do a slow heat so the butter doesn't burn and I need to cook it slow too because uh, it's on the bone and it takes a while to uh, cook all the way through. Now it's just patience uh, not to move the fish around in the pan too much uh, because I want the skin to cook, otherwise it can get stuck in the pan and you can rip it. You can see how it starts to cook when I base it with the hot butter in the pan. It's just my personal uh, preference to use butter, but you could always use olive oil if you like. I'm a big butter fan, so uh, that's why I use it and I'm very generous with it too. It's the moment of truth to see if I uh, did it correctly. Oh boy. This looks good. I have to give it a little more season into the butter of those. Be generous with that and then the sweet kelp salt blend that I put on top. Continue to base it. So all the flavors, you should be able to smell it now. I'm gonna turn the pan off, get a plate, put the garnish around and serve it. It looks beautiful. Now the pickled vegetables uh, are ready. So I'm just gonna strain them. Strain the liquid off like this. And I'll keep them here. Put the garnish here around and we place the, the European place on top. Just like that. It's really beautiful. And then onion and the celery. I like the, the acid that comes from the liquid and the sweetness from the sugar. What I like to do at the end is to use dulse and just put them a little bit in the pickling liquid and just have them here on the side as a garnish on the plate. So, and what I showed you earlier was my fried uh, sweet kelp with some sesame seed on top. So we just uh, just have them here so it's nice and crispy. Whole sauteed European place has to be one of my favorite. And I love it also because I'm using all the, the flavors from seaweed, uh, the dulse and the butter that goes inside the flesh, it's beautiful. Not only that, we pickled some of the, uh, the dulse as well and we use it as a garnish uh, combined with a crispy uh, sweet kelp with some sesame on top. So. It's a beautiful plate, I love it. I'm gonna encourage everybody to play around with seaweed because I think it's the future and uh, I love it, thank you.